Hello and welcome to the final data visualization project. So today what we're going to be looking at is creating a tree map diagram. And now what this is, is we have to create an app like this code pen here. And a tree map has a bunch of data and it creates these tiles. And the size of these tiles depends on some kind of um, factor in the data. So in this case, it's the value field right here. So the higher the value, the larger the tile. So we can have a choice of data sets to do this. So we can either have the biggest Kickstarter programs, the top grossing movies, or the largest video game sales. And I'm just going to open the one that's for the movie. So I'm going to do the highest grossing movies for this. And I've just created a simple project to start with. So I have a HTML document here. I've imported D3 using the script tag, created a style sheet, I've also created a canvas in here with just the ID of canvas. And I've also imported my own script tag here and the test suite as well. If I look at the script, if style tag, I just have HTML and body to take up the full height. I've set the flex box to just send to the SVG canvas and I've given it a background color. I've also set the width and the height of the canvas. What I've done in the script tag is I've saved the URL for the JSON file, so this one here. I've saved that into this string called movie data URL. I have this variable here, movie data, which will store the data once we import it so we can access it later. I have canvas, which is just a D3 selection of this SVG tag right here so we can reference it easily. And I have this function draw tree map. So what we'll do is we'll import our data right here and then we'll run the draw tree map function to actually draw the tree map from this movie data URL. So what I'm gonna do is just open this, oops, open up um, index.html with live server. And yeah, we're ready to get started now. So we have a canvas here and a test suite. So the next thing we're going to look at is trying to import this JSON data into our app as a JavaScript object so we can actually use it with D3 to draw the tree map. So I'm going to, I'm not going to use the XML HTTP request for this because I'm just going to use D3's JSON method, which is a lot quicker. What you do is you call the D3.json method and as its only argument, you give it the URL of the JSON file, which I've saved here to movie data URL. Remember that that's just this right here. And what this does is it returns a promise. So we'll call the dot then method and give it a function to run once the promise has been resolved. So once we have a response and this function will take in two things. So it'll take in the data and this data right here is basically the JSON file, but it's been passed into a JavaScript object for us. And we also have, if we have an error, we'll have this error right here. So what we want to do now is if there's an error, we just want to console log the error so we can just understand it. And if I put an else statement here, so this means there's no error and we have the data. Remember this data is has been passed into a JavaScript object already. So what I want to do is just assign it to this movie data variable right here. So I'll just say movie data equals data. And I'm going to console.log movie data just to make sure we have it correctly. And finally, once we have this movie data, we can start drawing the tree map. So we can run this draw tree map function after this. And we'll fill in this function later. So if I save that now and go into here and we take a look at the console, we can see that we have this array imported or this JSON imported as a JavaScript object. And if I just take a quick look at the data, we have these different categories, so action, drama, adventure, family, animation, comedy, biography. And um, these movies right here have this thing called value, which is the revenue they raised. And we want to make sure when we create our tree map that the size of the tiles is based on this value field right here. So now that we've imported our data, we can start looking at fulfilling some of the user stories. So let's get started on completing the user stories. If we look at user story one, what it says is my tree map should have a title with an ID of title. Now this one is very simple to do. All you have to do is somewhere in your document, just create a tag. 
with the ID of title like this. And this is even optional, you can just give it some text inside. So I'm just going to put highest grossing movies. And if I save that now, and we have a look here, we have this title right here. And if we look at the console, we have an element with an ID of title. So if I run the test now, we can see that user story one has already been passed. So user story two is actually all also not that difficult. So what it says is my tree map should have a description with an ID of description. So what I can do here is just create another tag. So I'm just going to go with div this time, give it an ID of description like this. And inside it, maybe just put some description text. So I'm just going to put top 95 highest um, grossing movies sorted by revenue like this. Um, that's all the information we really have about this source. There's no mention of the year or anything. But anyway, we have this div with an ID of description now. So if I run the test, we can see the user story two has now been completed. So now that we've imported our data, let's look at actually drawing the tiles onto the map now. So we can go ahead and get started with creating our tree map. This is where we'll fulfill user story three, where it says we should create rectangle elements with a class of tile that represent the data. So there's a few steps we need to do to do this. Firstly, we have to set up something called a hierarchy. If we look at this, we can see that this is kind of a tree structure because we have this node here, which has some children, and this node here has some children like this. And this is a leaf node, for example. So we have a tree structure here, but D3 doesn't know this yet. So he needs to figure out that this is a tree structure and we need to tell it how to process this. So this is where we need to set up a hierarchy. So at the top of the hierarchy will be this movies node here. And at the, I guess the very bottom of the hierarchy will have these individual leaf nodes that represent each movie. So to do this, first thing we have to do is create a hierarchy. So we'll say let hierarchy equals, and we call the D3.hierarchy method. And this takes in two arguments. So the first argument is a reference to the object where the data is. And remember, we stored this JSON data that we passed and we put it into this movie data field right here. So this is movie data. The second argument is a function. And what it tells it is it is at each node, what which field are its children stored in? So if we look at here, we have this node here and its children field right here have this array of its child nodes. This node right here also has a field called children that has its child nodes in. So we have to tell it where to look for the child node for each node. And here we want to return. So for any given node, if it has children, it'll be in the field called children like this. Next thing we want to do is call a method called dot sum on this. And this takes in a function again to specify something for each node. So what sum does is it specifies how to kind of add a value to each node. So if we look here, the, the um, areas of these tiles are determined by this value field right here. And what this means is like, it, it, it'll be used later to determine which tiles to give the largest area and which tiles to give the smallest area. So we're basically looking at something to quantify the value of the node. And if we look at the leaf nodes, we can see that they have this field called value, which contains the revenue. And we want a higher revenue to have a larger tile and lower revenue have to have a smaller tile. So this function, this um, sum function, tells it which field to look at in any given node to, to kind of categorize how to value the nodes so like how to you know use it to generate an area for example so we want to return the value field so on any given node we want to return the value again this will become a lot clearer once we start drawing it finally we have a function we have another method here called dot sort and this takes in two nodes and what we do is for any given node we tell it how to sort it so I'm just going to write the code out here and explain what this is. Okay, so this function has to return an integer or, or a number. 
And if it's a positive number that it returns, it means node 2 will be put before node 1. If it's a negative number that it returns, it means node 1 will be put before node 2. And we want to make sure the node with the highest value, because they're sorted by value, because the node with the highest value comes first here, that forms the first tile. We want to make sure the nodes with the higher values come before the nodes with the lower values. So we want this to return a positive number. And if node 2 has a higher value than node 1, then this will return a positive number. So for any given nodes, um, it'll put forward whichever one has a higher value. So we've created the hierarchy now. So I'm just going to have a look at the hierarchy just very quickly. Um, I don't think we really understand this data structure, but it's it's kind of in a hierarchical format now. So we have like children within children like this. And OK, so each it, it, they have a depth as well. So it's kind of some tree like syntax right now. Um, we have to kind of convert this into Actually, I'm going to call the leaves method because we're only interested in this leaf node. So we have these branches and the leaf nodes are the only, the ones that have the movies in them. So leaf nodes are the nodes with no children. So that's like the direct movies themselves. So if you look here, this is a branch, branch, branch. And then we finally get to this leaf right here. So because this has no children. So if we do um, hierarchy.leaves, what it does is it returns all the leaf nodes. And if you look now, we have 95 of these leaf nodes since we have the top 95 movies and they have some values with them. Now, this isn't enough for us to start drawing rectangles from because we haven't calculated any dimensions or anything. So what we have to do now is to create a tree map with it. So I'm going to create a method here. So remember, I'm creating a method. So I'm going to say let create tree map equals v 3tree map. So we call this method, oops, just tree map. And then we also um, call another method on this called dot size. And this is where we set the size of our total tree map to be. So that's like the total width and the total height of our tree map. I remember that we had our canvas as 1000 by 600. So I'm just going to give this 1000 by 600 like this. And remember, this create tree map is a method. That's why I've called it create tree map. So what this will do is this is a method. And what we can do now is give any hierarchy to this method, and it will create a kind of tree map from that. So we'll put some data fields into the leave node so we can actually start drawing some rectangles with it. I'll show you how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the create tree map method on this hierarchy that we created. And what that'll do is on all the leaf nodes, it'll put in some properties that allow us to draw the rectangles from it. So if I save this now and have a look at this again, on each of the leaf nodes, we have these four values now. And what this means is x0 and y0 is the coordinates where the top left corner of the tile should go. And x1 and y1 is where the bottom right corner of the tile should go. So this first movie here will go from 0 to 100 point something and then from 0 here to like 139 point something. If we look at the next one right here, it'll go from 100 point something. So it'll start off where the first one finished. Sorry, it'll go from 0 on x again. Sorry, so it'll start here. But it'll, it will go to here. Uh, yeah, sorry, it'll go from 100 here, the second one. It'll go to 187, and then the Y is the same. So we have these, th we can now tile, start tiling them because we have coordinates for where the corners of the rectangle should go. If we also look, we can see that they've been sorted by value. So the one with the highest value, so avatar, is first. Then we have Jurassic World, which has the second value, and so on. So the, the tile that's created first will be the tile with the highest value. And this is an array now that we can directly give to D3 to draw stuff with. So the next thing we have to do is create the actual rectangles. And what I'm going to do is because we have these rectangles, but we want to put text in them, we can't put text inside an SVG rectangle. So the only way to do this is to create a group element and then put the text inside it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to select all the leaves from the canvas. 
sorry, select all the G elements from the canvas, and I'm gonna associate it by calling the data method to this array right here. So that's, the array is um, hierarchy.leaves. Actually, you know what, I'm going to create a new array called movie um, tiles and send this to hierarchy.leaves. So, yeah, I'm going to use the movie tiles here, just for some clarity. So this array is used to create each of the movie tiles. So then I'm going to call the enter method to specify what to do when we don't have a G element for one of these movie tiles, which is all of them, and we want to create it. So we want to call append and create a new movie tile, sorry, a new G tile here. And I'm going to um, assign this to a variable block. So if we have a look now, we can see that inside our canvas we have all these G elements and we have 95 G elements created. So now we need to create some rectangles. And remember, block references this um, G element. So we, what we can see is we can append each block with a rectangle and we can set the class of the rectangle to tile. So I'm going to say dot attribute class tile like this. So now what we have is for each of the movies inside this G, we have a rectangle with a class of tile. So I know this was very long, so I'm just going to quickly recap again what we did. So we created a hierarchy to tell it to process this movie data as a tree. We said that each node, if it has any children, will be stored in this children field. We've told it that each node's value can be determined by what's in this value field. And we told it that um, we want to sort nodes and put nodes that have a higher value first. Then what we did was we created a method right here called create tree map. And what this does is it creates a tree map with the size of 1000 by 600 for any hierarchy we give it. We call this method with the hierarchy we created before. And what that does is it sets some properties on each of the leaf nodes for the coordinates of the corners of the rectangles that we can draw from it. Then what we did was we just set this movie tiles to the leaf to be the array of leaf nodes. And then for each of these um, array items, we created a new group element. And finally, we added a rectangle to that group element with a class of tile. So that should be everything now for user story three. Again, it was a lot of work, but it should become easier now. And if I run the test now, we can see that user story three has now been completed. So let's dive into user story four now. And what it says is that there should be at least two different fill colors used for the tiles. So if we have a look at the example they gave us, we can see that depending on the console or some kind of type, we have the different fill colors for the rectangles in here. That's what we need to do. So firstly, what I'm gonna do is set the fill of each of the rectangles. So we have these rectangles that we created right here. So I'm gonna call the attribute method for fill. And um, what we give it is a function that takes in an item from the array and we're working with the same items as the group elements so we have this movie data movie tiles array sorry and we have all of these items right here and what I'm gonna give it says it takes in a single movie I guess and we want to um, set the colors based on the category of movie or the genre and if we look at each movie um, yeah, each movie object we have this um, field called data and then this field called category and that's where the type of movie has been stored so I'm just gonna say let category equals move so for any given movie we take it it'll be whatever is in the data object in the category property and then I'm gonna be like um, returning different colors based on the category so I'm gonna say if category is action then return something and so on but there's like seven different categories so I'm not gonna bore you with 
Okay, so what I've done is I've told it to return orange if it's action, drama light green, adventure coral, family light blue, animation pink, comedy khaki, and biography tan. The colors really don't matter. Um, as long as you return at least two different colors, you should be okay. So if I save that now, what we have is if we look at the elements, we haven't created the rectangles yet, so don't worry. But if we look at the different rectangles, we can see that they have a fill color. And um, if we look at this one, this is pink. So we're returning rectangles with at least two different fill colors. So that should be enough for this user story. So if we run this now, we can see that user story four has now been passed. So let's look at completing user story five now. And what it says is each tile should have a data name, data category, and data value containing their name, category, and value. So we just have to create some attributes that point to these fields right here. So name, data, category. So the first one I wanted us to do was data name. So I'll go back here. And it says um, for this each tile. So it has to be on whatever has a class of tile, which is our rectangle right here. So I'm going to call the attribute method and I'm going to set the data and name. And it's going to take in a movie again. And for any given movie, um, we want to set it to the name, which is stored in data and then name. So I'm going to re here, I'm going to return for any given movie data. So movie data name. Then it wants us to set the data category. So Again, I'm gonna, oops, I'm just gonna put this up here. So I'm gonna call the attribute method again, and this time the data category. And what this does is again, it takes in a function with a movie as the input. And this time we wanna return the category field. So it'll be movie data category like this just to refresh a category stored in this field right here. Um, then we want to set finally the data value field. So the data value. And again, this is a function that takes in a movie. And we want to return the movies the value fields. So it'll be movie data value. Again, movie data value like this. So if I save that now, and we take a look at our elements, we can see that each of the rectangles have their field set. So we have the name with the name of the film, we have a category with the type of the film, and we have the value with the revenue of the film. So if I run the test now, we can see that user story five has been completed. So now we're going to look at drawing our rectangles properly. And this is where we'll complete user story six. So what it says is the area of each tile should correspond to the data value. So the area should be dependent on the revenue. And um, tiles with a larger data value should have a bigger area. So we have to set a few things up so that we can have these rectangles on our canvas. We first have to set the x and y coordinates. And then we have to set our height, the height and width so we can actually see them. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the x and y coordinates. Now if we look here, we have the rectangles inside these g elements. So the rectangles um, will be created inside these group tags. So what we need to do is when we set the x and y coordinates, we want to set the x and y coordinates for the group tags. And then the rectangles will just be drawn at 0, 0. So by default, all the group tags, if I put my mouse cursor over it, are drawn right here at 0, 0. So we want to translate them to the right coordinates. So where we created the group tags, we want to, we can't set the x and y coordinates of group tags, so we have to call a um, transform method on this. And we want to, sorry, we have to call set the transform attribute, so it'll be attribute transform. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this on a new line. We want it to be a translation. And if I open the bracket. So remember how I said that for each of these, the um, top left coordinate, so that's um, where the position is, I guess, is 
at x0, y0. So we want to translate it along the x-axis by x0, and we want to translate it along the y-axis by y0. So what we're going to do here is, sorry, um, we want to give it a function this time that takes in a movie. And we want to return and then translate, open brackets. And then if we look at the movie's x0 field, this is how far to move it along the x-coordinate. Then I'm just going to put a comma and a space. And then we want to move it along the y-coordinate by movie's y0 field. This has been created when we set up the tree map, so we didn't have to worry about generating these ourselves. And then what I'm going to do is finally close off the bracket. So if I save that now, we can see that the Gs have been translated. And we can see that this group, the first group element starts at 0, 0 here. The second one starts at x equals 100. Third one starts here and so on. So they've all been placed now correctly all over the place. Next thing to do is set the um, width and height. And for the width and height, we can just set it on the rectangle itself because we want the rectangle tile to have a certain height and width. So I'm going to set the width first. And again, this is a function that takes in a movie. And if we think about what we can return here, in any of these given movies, we don't have a width and height attribute. But given that the um, top left coordinate is at x0, y0, and the bottom right coordinate is at x1, y1, we can calculate the width and the height from this. So the width must be um, x1 take away x0, because x1 is the x-coordinate of the right side of the rectangle, x0 is the x-coordinate of the left side of the rectangle, so the width of the rectangle is x1 take away x0. So for any given movie, we want to set this width, oops, width like this, to return, and then we want to take away x0 from x1, so it'll be x1 take away the movie's x0 field. Finally, we have to set the height, so I'm just going to give a height function. And if we think about the height, we know that for any given movie here, um, y0 is the y value of the top side of the rectangle, and y1 is the y value of the bottom side of the rectangle. So if we do y1 take away y0, we can get the height of the rectangle. So what I'm going to do here is return movie y1, take away movie y0, like this. And if we save that now, we can finally see that we have the rectangles created. And if we look in here, we have these rectangles with the class of tile, and they've been added. Now, I'm just going to add a little tweak to this, because right now we just have the rectangles, but what I want to do is just add a bit of text so we can, oops, that's a completed one, um, so we can actually see um, like what each of these tiles represents. And like I said, you can't add a text to a rectangle element, so we have these group elements right here, so we can just add a text in this group element. So remember that block was the selection for the group element, so what I can do here is I can say block.append and we can append this with an SVG text element. And then we can call the dot text function to set the content inside the text tags. And again, this is a function where we'll take in a move a single movie. And for each movie, we just want to put the name of the movie in here. And remember that the name for any given movie is stored in data and then name. So here we want to return for any given movie, movie data name like this. Finally, I'm just going to move it so we can see it. So I'm going to just set the x and y attributes. So I'm just going to put the x as to 5 and maybe the y at, I don't know, 20 like this. Oops, this should be movie. So if we save that now, we can see that we actually have text that represent each movie now. So that should be enough to pass the user story. So if we have a look now, we can see that the area of each tile does correspond to the data value element. So that's user story six. 
So now what we're going to do is create a legend like this here so we can identify what category each of these blocks belong to. And this is where we'll be completing user story 7. So what it says is my tree map should have a legend with an ID of legend. So this one's fairly easy to do. All you have to do is in your document somewhere create an element and it has to be an SVG element because we have to have rect elements in it. So just create an SVG element with an ID of legend like this. Oops, legend like that. And save that. And if you run that now, we can see that user story seven has been completed. Next thing to do is user story eight. And what it says is we the legend should have rect elements that have a class of legend-item. So to do this, we just have to create some rect elements in here and set the class to legend-item like this. And you just create these for each of the um, different types you have. So if I save that and run it now, we can see that user story 8 has been completed. Now, um, user story 9, what it says is they should have at least two different fill colors. So what we have to do is create a rectangle for each of the different fill colors we use and then maybe specify what to do for each of them. So what I'm just going to do is for each of them, I'm just going to create a G tag and then I'm going to put a rectangle and some text inside it. But this is going to take a long time, so I'm just going to skip to where I've finished it. Okay, so what I have now is I have for each of them, I have a rectangle still with the class of legend item, set some X and Y coordinates, height and width, and I've set the fill colors to be the same as the fill colors that I used in the tree map. I've also added some text next to each of them with some, I guess, some descriptive text on it. Um, so if we have a look now, we can see that I'm going to change the colors of the background soon, but we have these rectangle elements now and we have these text. Um, I'm just going to do a quick tweak now because we can't see everything. So I'm just going to stick some minimum height on the legend. So if I do legend like this, I'm just going to put the min height to 300 px because we don't have enough room right now. So if I scroll down now, we have space for everything. Again, I'll change the colors later. But all that matters is we have different fill colors on the rectangles. So if I run the test now, we can see that user story 9 has been completed. So we're almost finished now. So we just have two more left. So if we look at user story 10, it's another tooltip one. And what it says is when we mouse over one of the tiles, we can see a tooltip with an ID of tooltip that displays more information. So the first thing we need to do is create a div with the ID of tooltip. So I've done this a lot of times now, so I'm just going to go through it quite quickly. Um, but if you watch the bar chart video, I explain it really in a lot of detail. So I'm just going to create a div with an ID of tooltip like this. So this is where we'll put our tooltip information. What I'm going to do here is where I selected the canvas, I'm going to just create a selection for the tooltip and I'm going to say d3.select and the ID of tooltip like this. So we've selected that tooltip. Next thing to do is um, set the tooltip to be invisible by default. So if I go down here and I put tooltip, we want the default visibility to be hidden so it doesn't show by default. Next thing to do is make it show when we put our mouse over it. So what I'm going to do is on any of these rectangles, I'm going to create a mouse over event. So I'll say dot on mouse over. So on a mouse over and what I'll do is it'll, I'll give it a function that takes in a movie. So one of the items from the array. And then what I want to do is I'm going to call the transform method on the tooltip. Sorry, transition method on the tooltip to change its style. And then I'm going to set its style of visibility to um, visible. 
And then what I'm going to do is create a mouse out event. So mouse out means we're not hovering over it anymore. And again, this is a function that takes in a movie, but this isn't really important. And what we want to do is transition this back into hidden. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and put hidden like this. Next thing I'm going to do is set the actual text of the tooltip. And I'm just going to use the inner HTML method to set the content inside the this tag right here. So I'll say tooltip dot inner HTML. Sorry, it's just HTML, the method is just called HTML. And this is a string that we give it. So one thing I'm going to quickly do is for the, um, I'm going to create a variable called revenue here. And what this will be is we have to select the revenue of the movie. So that'll be for any given movie, that will be movie data and then value. So I'm going to say movie data. Value. And what I'm going to do is, I don't know if they've done it here, um, no they haven't, but what I'm going to do is, because a lot of these are in the millions, I'm just going to add some formatting to give it commas for every thousand. And if you just look on Stack Overflow for thousand separator string format, um, we can just call this to string method and this with this um, regular expression replacement that'll do it for us. So whatever the value is, we want to just... Um, set the commas. Again, this is completely optional, so there's no need to do it really. Um, then inside the text, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put a dollar sign maybe, then the revenue, then I'm going to put a new line. Actually, I'll put a horizontal line here. And then I'm going to put um, the movie's name, so I'm going to put movie data name like this. So this will set the inner HTML. And I'm just going to double check that that's what I'm supposed to do. So yeah, I think so. So if I save that now and have a look, we can see that we have the tooltip appearing whenever we put our mouse cursor over one of the tiles. And we can see that it shows the cost that's been formatted and also the name of the movie. So yeah, that should be everything we need for tooltip test one or user story 10. So if we have a look now, we can see the tooltip test one has been passed. So let's look at the final user story now, which is user story 11. And what it says is the tooltip needs to have a data value attribute that is the same as the data value of the area. So this is very simple to do. So whenever we hover over it, what we can do is set the tooltips attribute of data value. And remember, we're already working in a function that takes in a movie. So we can set this to just the movie's data and then value. So if we look at the data value that we did, that's exactly what we did. And remember that a movie's revenue is stored in its data and then value like this. So if I save that now and we take a look at the console and we look at the tooltip, we can see that the data value right here changes to whatever the revenue of the movie was. So if I run this now, we can see that we've passed all 12 user stories and we have completed the tree map project. So I'm just going to go ahead and do some styling to this to make it look a bit better. Okay, so what I've just done is I've just added some CSS styling. I've also put these into some more divs just to organize the space a little bit better. Um, I changed, uh, mostly just changed the color. I haven't changed the script at all, actually. Mostly just changed the colors of it, um, set some width and height and attributes. I added a hover to the tiles so that it changes color when we hover over it so we know exactly which one we are looking at. So if we have a look now, it looks a lot better now and we can see that the tooltip appears here. We have the legend here, description, title. None of the functionality should have changed. So if I run the tree map test again, we can see that all 12 tests pass. What I'll do again is I'll put the source code and the written guide in the description so that you can copy it if you get stuck. Um, what we, we can do now is just go ahead and put this into a code pen and submit it. And this is the last project, so 
we can go ahead and claim the data visualization certificate now. So yeah, thank you for watching.